As you know, hundreds of thousands of people are taking to the streets in peaceful protest in response to racist violence against Black Americans. Recent events have dramatically brought to the surface the deep-rooted racism that people of colour are experiencing in America, but also across the world. And so we want to take a minute of silence at the beginning of this service to acknowledge that suffering and the loss of many lives due to race-based violence. In our reading today from Matthew's Gospel, we hear Jesus saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And on this Trinity Sunday, we want to take those words of Jesus seriously, to make disciples of all nations. But in order to make disciples, we need to be disciples first, each one of us. Disciple means someone who learns. If we're going to help other people to learn about the faith, to learn from God the Father, to learn from God the Son, to learn from God the Holy Spirit, we need to be people who learn and who listen ourselves. But we haven't always listened to the right voices. So let's confess our sins together. O oh God, who created and loves all people. We come before you today, confessing the sin of racism in our country, our church, and in ourselves. Forgive us for our part in it, for the ways we have contributed to the oppression of others, whether knowingly or unknowingly. We want to be different and for our nation to be different. But it is hard when we face the injustice of institutions, as well as the prejudice in ourselves. Help us to see the reality of racism and bigotry wherever it exists, and to have the courage to challenge it. Through your Holy Spirit, May we be given the grace and power 
to change within ourselves and also to join with others to do the work of love and justice in the world, to move toward the goal of bringing an end to racism. Through the name of your son, Jesus, who came for all people, amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Amen. time to be around their family. The reading that I'm going to be reading today is Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20. The Bible says, but the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had given them orders to go. And when they saw him, they gave him worship, but some were in doubt. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority has to be given to me in heaven and on earth. Go then and make disciples of all nations, giving them baptism in the name of the Father and, the Son, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to keep all the rules which I have given you and see I am ever with you and even to the end of the world. This is the word of God. Thank you for reading, Fatima. This passage from the Gospel of Matthew is sometimes known as the Great Commission. Jesus' final words to his disciples before he goes up into heaven, and as some people have said, Jesus begins working from home. Jesus then sends the Spirit in order to energize and give life and boldness to the disciples so that the disciples can carry on the work and the mission that Jesus began. In our everyday, ordinary lives, each of us are called to take part in God's mission in the world because God's Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, lives in each one of us. Sometimes we're conscious of that mission and that task, and other times we're probably less aware. One day we know God will be making a new heavens and a new earth. This is a part of our Christian hope where there is no more pain, there is no more crying, no more fighting, no more violence, no more virus, no more injustice. And our jobs as Christians is to help make those building blocks for that new world that God is making. 
Those building blocks come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and as part of the Anglican Church, we've identified five basic areas. They are, one, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. That means sharing your faith with other people. Two, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. This is about mentoring people, praying with them, coaching people on this journey of faith. Number three, to respond to human need by loving service. This is about helping our neighbors, helping our family members who are in need. Number four, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. This is about standing up for what is right, seeking justice in peaceful protest. It's about raising awareness or defending the cause of the vulnerable in different ways. And number five, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. This is all about responding to environmental problems like global warming, air pollution, waste disposal, ozone layer depletion, and water pollution. We invited some of the members of St. Jude and St. Paul's to reflect on how they take part in God's mission in the world in each of these areas. And so I'd like to share a few of those with you now. everyone. Um, over the last few days I was contacted by some residents of my local community. Some of them, mostly elderly, were still feeling anxious and nervous about the easing of a lockdown. We talked about their fears and the future and I just was able to help them overcome their situations and uh, so that they don't feel um, so um, isolated that there's always someone there for them to talk to. I was able to also to give them sort of like activities that they can do at home and just encourage them to get out a bit more and do some walking as well. Um, so all they basically just wanted was a listening, listening ear and also um, keep in contact with each other. So I was able to provide that for them. So And um, just have them laugh sometimes and sort of like cheering them up sometimes. So just being there for them when they need to, so they don't feel like they're on their own, as we are all in this together. With pandemic, it has helped me um, to rise up to the calling. I've always done um, my teaching and prayer ministry with um, people on the telephone. I have a telephone uh, ministry that I do regularly with people around the world. And I've been on Facebook for the past 12 years, ministering in different ways. Uh, but with pandemic, uh, while praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to me to take my teaching and prayer ministry on life um, ministrations so i've been doing that for the past two and a half months i've been on life every day at least over about today 66 66 days now that i've been doing that i've um, my viewers and those that join me they're quite happy they send me nice messages which i'm happy they're encouraging me to keep pushing forward so it has encouraged me to study more it encouraged me to pray more to wait on the lord for revelations and then um, I'm doing that. Uh, I'm happy doing that. And I, I, I just know that that's what God wants me to do. I don't think anything can take it away from me now. Because um, I find out that it's so easy. At the comfort of my home, I can wake up and do this ministry. I don't need to go out. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to chase people about on the streets, uh, evangelizing. I can do that on social media. Thank God for social media that has enabled us 
Secondly, my charitable work, which is in the Ministry of Health, uh, I do that regularly all the time in Africa, India, in so, some deprived area, um, some less privileged people. So with pandemic, where we, we rose up to the call, uh, there was outreaches that we, we, we had to do to start feeding people, giving people food, groceries, even money to buy food, families, a lot of very, very less privilege. And I'm so happy that God has put me in that position to do it. And I thank God, some of my friends uh, uh, that I spoke to, they were so happy. They would just give me money to say, go ahead, go and do this. So I'm happy that people are even supporting me to do this. So my, my crew members are back home in Nigeria. They, they're very proactive. So they, they are ready to do anything I ask them to do. So they are working on my behalf, even while I'm in England. They're doing a lot for me in Nigeria and everybody's happy. So I'm happy that um, at, at, for once I could do, be more serious, more active in the things of God. And I know God is blessing me while I'm doing all this. I just thank the Lord for the opportunity, for the gifts he has put in us. And thank you, James, for letting us talk. God bless you. Bye. 16 months ago, we moved into our home at the vicarage and we were very fortunate that a large garden came with our new home. For the first year, as we settled in, we did not quite know what to do with it as it was overgrown and needed a lot of work. Then this winter, I decided to create a flower garden to grow cut flowers and since then, when I have been able to, I have worked daily in the garden. During recent months, my view of the garden has dramatically changed. The garden is no longer a problem to be solved, but as a gift to us, it is our responsibility to now take care of it. As we respond to the natural environment around us, we hope to not only attract some bees, but my prayer is that in time, this garden can be a blessing to others in this community.
Our prayers will now be led by some of the children from St. Jude and St. Paul's Church. Let us pray. Dear God, I pray for the world. Help us not to throw plastic on our streets and in the sea. I also pray that we would look after the homeless better and take care of the people who need our help. God in free person, blessed Trinity. Dear Lord, I am praying to raise awareness on what is going on in America currently. I pray for all the young black men and women who are being targeted by the police and the government itself. I pray for George Floyd, his family, and I pray that his story will never be repeated or forgotten. I pray for all the young people like myself who will soon be returning to school. I pray that we will be safe from COVID-19 and we will continue to study for GCSEs or SATs or whatever we need to catch up on. God in three persons, bless Trinity. Let's pray for sharing faith with others. Dear God, please help people to have faith in themselves and others and those they love and trust for events like this and tougher times when needed. God in three persons, bless Trinity. Let, let us pray for our loved ones and also for families that are sick or lost a family member during illness or coronavirus, that God will, God. will guide them. God in three pe- persons, bless Trinity. Let us pray about the environment. Dear Lord, please help people. Be, help, please help people be enlightened about global warming and, our, uh, and to help save lots of animals that are endangered. God in the person's blessed trinity. Let us pray for our neighbours in need. Dear Lord, our helpers and saviours, their Present helpers in time of, of troubles, come and help us, help our neighbours. We pray for our weak neighbours. Lord, give them strength and power. Provide for them in their needs. We pray for the vulnerable Lord. Stand with them. Take away their fears and answer their cries. Don't leave leave them, but always be with them O Lord God in three persons bless the Trinity drawing our prayers to a close our collect for Trinity Sunday Holy God faithful and unchanging enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And let us now say the Lord's Prayer together in whatever language feels most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. so beautifully as we reflected on the role that we play in God's mission. And thank you for joining us this morning. Please join us again uh, every morning at 9.15 for morning prayer um, or for Compline on Wednesday at 9pm. And of course, we'll be here again next Sunday. So as fellow learners on this path of life, we're committed to the process of learning, being disciples and to being sent out with God's blessing. So let's receive God's blessing now as we go from this place. 
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We're going to end by sharing God's peace together, and you're invited to share the peace with someone in your own household, first of all, if you want, if there's people living with you. Otherwise, uh, please do text someone the peace or uh, by WhatsApp or Messenger or whatever service you want to use. Um, but it's just great to be able to share God's peace in these times. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace, and peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs>